that's like the Bible this morning. Separate flesh from spirit. So that God, the only voice we should hear is the voice of from you, God. Pray, God, that you would give me articulation, speech, and clarity. Make all the connections. that your people will be transformed as a result of hearing this word. Touch them, penetrate the very core of their being. God, is anybody here who's connected to us, watching, listening, doesn't know yet, both Lord and Savior, our prayer, God, is that something will be said, something will be done to cause them to give their lives fully. Paul urged all of them to take some food. 
saying today is the 14th day that you have been in suspense and remaining without food, having eaten nothing. This is the word of God for people, God. Thanks be to God. Methods for the middle. Methods for the middle. Methods. Methods for the middle. If you spend any time studying the Word of God, what you will conclude and what you will find, and for those who have my prayer is that you will eventually discover these truths in that Scripture is packed with countless promises rendered by God. From Genesis all the way to the last amen of Revelations, there are myriad of promises that God makes to all those who receive God's promise and God's word. These promises, of course, are the foundations of our faith. We recite them, we memorize them, and we uh, have them uh, adorned in our sacred spaces. Some of them, we have some of these uh, promises in our phones, and we put them on uh, whiteboards in our homes, and we print out portions of scriptures and post them in our workspaces to remind us they are the foundations of our faith. But they are also the fortifiers of our faith. They fortify our faith. When we remind ourselves of God's promises, it strengthens our ability to walk out our faith in God. We know, according to the word of God, that in all things we are more than conquerors. We know that since we are born of God, then we are overcomers of this world. We know that we are victorious in Christ Jesus. We know that the battle has already been won, has already been won and we know that we can do all Christ that strengthens us. We know these promises and we approach each and every day with full confidence in these promises. In fact, some of us quote them every single day. When we wake up, we remind ourselves of the promises of God. However, brothers and sisters, if you be honest this morning, life has a way of hitting us right in the middle of seeing these promises manifest in our lives. And even though we might know what the end will entail, we know that we are victorious. We know that the battle has already been won. And we know that we are overcomers. But we often, brothers and sisters, get sidetracked in the middle. Somewhere between what God has promised and what God has manifest. Um, indeed, the most difficult part of any season is surviving the middle. It's that, that murky, uh, strange place where God has said something to us, but we're stuck in the middle where God has not yet manifested what God has said. And perhaps there may be somebody who's watching this morning, who's listening to the words out of my mouth, and you feel like you are right there, hallelujah, where you've heard from God and you know what God has said, but the difficulty was not receiving God's word and the difficulty is not being able to respond to God's word, but the difficulty is remaining hopeful and remaining optimistic and remaining strong in the middle period times where you can't see what God has said. You can't what God has said. You can't track what God has said. It seems like God just has you surviving the middle time. And that's what we're going to talk about today. I hope you got your Bibles open. In Acts chapter number 27, particularly verses 33 through verse number 38, it captures the conflict at hand. Paul, other prisoners, the guards, and the sailors were lost at sea after they encountered a major storm, a hurricane, a typhoon, if you please. According to Acts chapter number 27, verse number 22, Paul encouraged the other ship passengers 
passengers by urging them to keep courage and ensuring them that they would not die. Therefore, the people had a promise spoken through the vessel of God. Uh, however, unfortunately, according to Acts chapter number 27 and verse number 27, it reports, get this, that after 14 days passed without any manifestation of what God has said. Y'all missed it. I said in verse 22, Sister Ben, God made God's promise through the vessel. Of God, Paul the Apostle, but in Acts chapter 27, verse number 27, the Luke writer reminds us or informs us that 14 days have passed after the promise, and it appeared, get this, that death would be the inevitable state of all the passengers embarked on the said ship. Acts chapter number 27, verse number 29 continues by informing the audience that the sailors feared that they might run unto the rock so they let down four anchors from the stern and prayed for a day to come. Acts chapter number 27 verse 30 31 and 32 notes that uh, when it did not look like day would come the sailors attempted to secretly escape the ship but was stopped by Paul's warnings to stay in the ship and the Bible declares when Paul declared to them you are going to have safety and you are going to recover but you to remain inside of the ship. And that's where we left off last week. That's where we started shouting, y'all, because we were reminded that there is power and strength and victory when you stay inside of the ship. As a matter of fact, let me just remind somebody who's watching right now, some person who was not with us last week or some person who's allowed the difficulties of this week to cause you to say ship of Zion. Get on board. I'm trying to figure out if you want to continue to trust and believe in God. Let me tell you the same words that Paul told these people in Acts chapter number 27. If you are going to survive the storm, you've got to stay in the ship. As a matter of fact, if you're watching this morning, just type those words in the comment section. Help the preacher out if you please. Just type the Americans you got to stay in the ship. No matter how many times you got to cry, you better stay in the ship. No matter how many times it looks like, hey man, there's more darkness in front of you than light in front of you. You've got to hold true that there's a promise and there's power and there's peace when you stay inside of the ship. Therefore, I text today, don't you dare close your Bibles. That's all I got today. Acts chapter number 20. Beginning at verse number 33 and concludes at verse number 39. It highlights the actions of the passengers after drifting at sea for 14 days. The people had the promise, don't miss this, but they were stuck in the middle between proclamation and manifestation. The people experienced 14 days stuck in the middle, get this, without any change and without seeing any difference. And they were forced to hold on to the promise without seeing pro any progress. Let me just pause parenthetically to remind you that that's what faith really is. Faith is not about naming it and claiming it, but faith is believing God when you can't see it. Faith is not about telling God and treating God like God is Santa Claus and a tooth fairy and a Jesus. But faith is staying still, amen, and remaining faithful and being confident in the fact that whoever he that began a good work in you shall perform it to the days of Jesus Christ. They are stuck, brothers and sisters, for 14 days and nothing has changed. And I believe I'm talking to somebody who knows exactly what that feels like something to you and you got to sit still and be stuck in the middle of a situation and ain't nothing changing. And to make things worse, not only have things not changed for you, but it looks like things are changing for everybody else. And God has you stuck in the middle for 14 days. I said, God, why did you have them there for 14 days? He said, son, remind them real quick and keep on moving. Remind them, if you please, amen, that every storm is not expedited. Some songs you gotta live through. Some songs you gotta 
what God has spoken. But here's the promise according to Acts chapter number 27. If God said it, you better stand strong on it. If God promised it, I don't care if it takes 14 days or 6 months in a pandemic. If God spoke it, it shall come to pass. I wish I had at least, I don't need everybody today. I brought my own fire with me. Sometimes it's hard to try. 
trust and wait on God when he has you in a holding pattern. Y'all know what a holding pattern is, don't you? If you've ever flown and there's been turbulent weather or if there's activity on the ground, what the pilot would do is that, watch this, he would hover. I wish I had some help in here. And hover upon a, a certain area that can't land, you can't go high, and you can't go low. But the pilot will have you hovering, watch this, until it's clear for landing. And brothers and sisters, there have been many people who have jumped ship. There have been many people who have quit God because they could not survive the holding pattern. But can I tell you, you've got to have trust in the same pilot who took you up. And you've got to have trust in the same pilot who will hold you. To have trust in the same Paul to command, why did Paul charge these people with the task 
of eating food. Don't miss this. I believe, uh, uh, Deacon Austin, by lifting this command, God wants us to see that one of the greatest Chanel reactions we display in the middle of God's seed is self-neglect. Plainly, when it is rough and when we can't see the end, chances are we suffer with engaging in self-care. I'm talking better than you're saying amen. You see, here, eating is symbolic of what Abraham Maslow would categorize as a physiological need. These needs, according to Maslow, are the most important human needs, and all other needs are secondary until these needs are met. Paul seemed to agree with this school of thought when he charged the people with eating some food. Paul charged these people to eat, watch this, because Caleb, the, uh, because Paul understood the importance of prioritizing self-care even in the middle of the city. And as I read Paul's charge, Sean, to the passengers, I could not help but uh, have some issues. I could not help but reflect on the countless times I've neglected self-care when I was positioned in the middle of God's sea. I could not help but see myself in the text and become convicted by this text because the lack of sleep and the lack of rest and the lack of recreation have all been my guilty charges in the middle of the sea. This is my question for the person who's watching and listening this morning. What self-care practices do you typically abandon when you're waiting in the middle? Can I go a step further? What self-care practices have you abandoned presently through these last six months of being stuck with not knowing, hey man, when you're going to be able to work, not knowing when the bills are going to be paid, not knowing if you can get groceries, not knowing if you can go to X, Y, and Z. What have you abandoned during this moment? Can I push it a step further, Sister Harris? Because when I initially looked at it, I got all up in my feelings. And God said, son, notice, uh-oh, I'm cussing at you now. Notice Paul, the servant, charged them, wait, watch this, to meet their necessities. Paul never said, engage in your vices. Uh, God help me here. Pa Paul encouraged the people uh, to engage in self-care because uh, many of us, uh-oh, usually run to our vices when we are stuck in the middle of the storm. In fact, some of us, uh-oh, I'm cussing at you now for real, for real, for real, for real. Some of us run to our vices so frequently that we have the tendency to mislabel vices as necessities. Talk good, Pastor T. I'm doing the best I can. You see, it is possible to engage in vices while forsaking the bare necessities. Uh, I think it was Audrey Lord that, uh, uh, that, that, that profound civil rights activist and woman and scholar in a burst of light who argues and I quote caring for myself is not self-indulgence it is self-preservation it's the act of political warfare plainly we must commit ourselves to the prioritization of eating and sleeping and breathing and drinking water and maintaining mental health even when we don't know how long it's going to be Y'all ain't saying nothing. I'll say it again. You might not know where all your money is coming. You might not be able to know what's going to happen in the next election. You might not be able to know what's going to happen in the school system. But you better make sure you're drinking your water. You better make sure you're getting adequate sleep. Y'all ain't saying. You better make sure that you're eating something. And not only eating something, but you're eating healthy. Because, hallelujah, you ought to be able to maintain and change the things you can change and control the things you can control and even though you might not be able to control it, you should not let it control you and you've got to make sure that you prioritize your self-care why Pastor T, should we prioritize our self-care I'm glad you asked, look at verse number 34, I'm trying to remain calm but I'm getting happy already verse number 34 says, watch this Paul says, you gotta eat, watch this because you on your head. I said, Paul, why did you tell them this, Chanel? Paul was trying to give them to understand that you ain't going to die in this. So you got to make sure you take care of yourself so you can have energy to be able to enjoy 
destroy what's on the other side. I prophesy to find people who are watching and listening to me right now. You better make sure your credit is together. You better make sure you drop those pounds you've been working on. You better make sure you get your eye right because there is glory after this. It might not happen 2020. It might not happen by January. But I heard the word of God says there's going to be glory after this. And I be doggone if I'm going to be sloppy and I'm going to be down and I'm going to be depressed and I'm not going to have my mind right because glory is coming out of the Holy Ghost right there. I wish you lay hands on yourself and prophesy to yourself and tell yourself, step this glory after this. I got to get myself together. I got to bring sexy back, all they say. I got to get tight and right. I got to make sure I got my shackles in balance. Because there's glory after this. He, he, t- he tells them, go, 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 go make sure you eat for Paul. Doesn't stop there. Paul says, yes, if you're going to survive the middle, I wish I had some help in here. You've got to make sure, amen, that you prioritize self-care. But in the second moment, in verse number 35, Paul says, watch this. After he told them this, the text word says, and then he took break. There, he just messed me up. Come on, if God could 
Let's use the word prayer in your hand. Let's put our hands together and declare grace. God is great. God is good. Let's thank God for every good food. By God's hands, we all are there. Give us, Lord, yes, our daily prayer. And according to Acts chapter number 27, verse number 37, the Bible declares that God not only provided for Paul, but according to verse number 37, he provided for all 276 people while they were stuck in the sea. Now, I don't know who's watching live, and I don't know how many likes we got right now. We might not have 276 passengers, but I believe I got a couple of y'all who can testify that God is a sustainer. God will give you substance. So yes, I'm going to prioritize my self-care, but I'm also going to pray He gave thanks for the Bible declares that they ate and they were encouraged. And after they ate and after they were encouraged, the Bible declares that after they were satisfied, thank you, hallelujah, the Bible declares that they then, amen, threw the rest of the bread, the wheat as the writer calls it, into the sea. I had to ask Paul, I said, Paul, why? the rest of the bread into the sea. He said, son, well, after you prioritize self-care and after, hallelujah, you learn how to praise God for the substance, you got to learn how to practice solid faith in God. I said, Paul, what you talking about? He said, son, well, when they threw the bread into the sea, this was a sign how much they trusted God. I said, God, what you're talking about? I said, well, he said, some well, if they would have held on to the remaining portions of the brain, they would have been showing that they didn't really trust God was going to provide for them in the future. But when they threw the remaining crumbs into the sea, y'all,
You're about to bring us to safety. And we'll get more bread there. Or God can keep us here a little longer. You're sending more bread to us. You'll do just like you did for the people in the world as the children. Israel the world is not. Your, your cause matter to fall for We trust. Amen. Hey, 
maybe somebody who's watching this thing today, who you feel like you're in the middle, you, you related to everything I said, you feel like you're right in the middle. You're in this weird space, you're just kind of drifting in So, so, 
someone, God bless you. If you saw the altar is still open, the altar is still open for you. The altar is still open for you. God bless you. Let me do the financial faith declaration with you today as you're sowing.
Woodstep Box 5, and then we're going to go, okay, let's go. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Unto him be glory in the church, Father, Christ Jesus, that all things, Lord, that 